So, um, why do I feel like I just got roasted? Is it just me or? <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, I'm excited for you guys today. Today we are going to talk about basically taking your business to the next level. Nothing happens without intention. Do we all agree? Sure. You got to be purposeful. You got to be intentional. You got to think about it. So today is a business planning clinic, and you are going to get out of this exactly what you put into it. If you go, well, the person next to me is chewing wallets and it's distracting. And blah, 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 blah. Why doesn't Brent have a coat on? And blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> and you just lose all that. You're here for you, man. I mean, some of you are so pumped about last year and what happened, right? You're like, wow, it was great, this and that. I've got agents in the room that sold three and four and five homes in December. How would you feel if you did that, right? And some of you are like, I didn't have done that for three months, right? And you're like, so this is your chance to have a different year, a better year. Not that 2018 was bad, for some of you it was the best year of your life. I had an agent this morning at my team meeting for my personal event home team, and she said when she started with us five years ago, her goal was to save $5,000 in savings, right? And to her, as a brand new real estate agent, that was all the money in the world. This year, her goal is 100000 in savings. Is that awesome? And it's not all about money, but sometimes it is about being a profitable businessman or woman. Do we agree? So here's the deal. Most people spend more time planning their, their vacations, planning their, their, uh, their wedding, their honeymoon, right? Remember how that effort you put into that? Which I did, but anyway. <laughs> but they, they spend so much time, they can tell you exactly what they're doing on a vacation, when they're gonna go zip lining, when they're gonna go horseback riding, when they're gonna go scuba diving, when they're just gonna, we're just gonna chill by the beach day. And they know everything, they, they've looked at the weather, they're focused, and guess what? They go do all those things. When it comes to their business, sometimes they just take whatever comes their way. Um, do you sell buildings? Sure, right? Do you sell uh, Do you sell mobile homes? I could, right? Are you with me? I mean, some of you got in real estate and tore it up. Some of you are like me. You got in real estate and you sold everything. You sold your couch, your TV, your stereo. So today we're going to talk to you about being successful, uh, taking it to the next level, and and you really can have a different life this year if you get focused on what counts. So with that. I'm going to give it back over to Mr. Jiha here, who is my buddy, and um, I, I can say this with all sincerity. Having been in the Keller Williams system for eight years, Remax for 12, I've been training and speaking in front of groups for a long time, um, probably 30 years, and uh, when I heard Rick first speak, I'm like, oh, I love this guy. He'd, everybody has speakers that resonate with them, right? Like, people love John Maxwell, personally, it's not doesn't ring my bell. I like Tony Robbins, right? I like Zig Ziglar, you know, and other people like, you know, have you read that book, Wild at Heart? Anybody read that book? Wild at Heart? Yeah. I've tried five times. I can't get back to the first chapter. And so different strokes for different folks. But I tell you what, Rick Jiha was my kind of guy, my kind of speaker. He's a gift. He's the first person I thought of. One of the first people when I got involved with my new company, XP, called him up. And um, just honored and privileged to work side by side with him. So with that, we're going to get launched on. And if you're missing a business planning workbook, Barry, turn around. There, just raise your hand. We'll get them to you. We're making more. Had a great turnout. So Rick, take it away. Mr. Jihad, give him a hand. Thank you, Brent. All right. So let's get serious about this. Sir, what's your name right there in the white shirt on the end? Jerry. So Jerry came up to me at the end. He said, I'm so excited about what we're going to get out of business planning today. I just asked you to do one thing at the end of the class. Tell us how now that we've got a plan. So we're going to wrap up the last few minutes by giving you how to go through and execute what you just spent getting ready to do. Do you get that? Because a lot of people say, oh, uh, last night I was at, in my office. How many of you are aware of this lady that's taking the world by storm right now? Her name's Rachel Hollis. She wrote a book called... Um, Thank you. I could have said it, but thanks for filling in the blank. Um, and she just wrote another book called Girl, Girl, Stop Apologizing. So my wife calls me. I'm in my office in Fremont. We live in Pleasant Hill, easily an hour drive without traffic. And she, it was 10 to 7. And I had told her, I'm working till 8 tonight. I got a lot to get caught up on because I have big, huge, hairy, audacious goals for this year. And she calls me at 10 to 7. She goes, can you be home at 730? I go, yes, if I had left 20 minutes ago. 
She goes, Rachel, Ho there's a movie at the movie theater that's got Rachel Hollis. It's a documentary. It's two hours long. I'm going. Get there as soon as you can. I've got a ticket for you. Right? And I'm like, I I've got goals. I have things to do. Right? But I went and I got there and it's those comfortable seats that you have to reserve. I was the only man in the whole place and it was sold out. Literally, I'm walking and I realize, why is everybody staring at me? The movie's on. I'm just trying to get to my seat. And I realize why everybody's staring at me. There was no freaking men in the whole place. So my point of that story is you are going to, she said so much about her, fir her first book, Girl, Wash Your Face, telling you how to plan your future life or, or how to get ready to plan your future life and not how to execute it and Girl, Stop Apologizing is about that. The reason I say that, ladies and gentlemen, is Brent used a word and I want you to remember this word and I'm going to put another one in front of it. He put intention. Intention. I'd like you to put the word clear in front of it. I have very clear intention on what I want to accomplish in my life. Okay, sometimes we get caught up. I love that Brent brought up the planning thing because we get pot caught up and there's a lot of people in the real estate industry who said, we spend so much time overestimating what we can do in a year and underestimating what we can do in a career. And I am a coach. I coach top producing teams all over the US and Canada. This morning was a coaching day and I was coaching one of my ladies and she said, I've got so much work to do, I just have to stop beating up on myself and start chipping away at the list. And there's a lot to be said about that. So let's really get into the booklet. We're not going to put it on the screen since you all have one. Uh, that was a disagreement between Brent and I. I said, they are responsible. Email it to them. They'll print it themselves. And he, of course, printed one for all of you. No skin in the game is what I say, but he's such a butt kisser. Um, <laughs> no, but, um, but so what I want you to do is pay attention to this. I've taught business planning for 15 years. This year is my... 15th year doing it. I do it between 20 and 30 times a year. And I want you to know this is not the best booklet I've ever used, but none of them that I've ever used. By next year, I'll have designed my own business planning workbook, which will cover everything. So make sure you don't miss my business planning workshops next year. Now, that first page talks about a mission statement. Ladies and gentlemen, Cindy right over here. She, did, she took this class from us last year. She texted me her, business, her, uh, her uh, mission statement today and said, I want you to pick it apart. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what you call accountability. Once you have gotten your mission statement done, and Brent's going to chime in, and I really do want him to chime in on this, then next year's business plan is much easier because business plan, uh, mission statements don't necessarily change unless you typically change your business or the whole why around why you're doing the business. But what I want you to know is that the example in that booklet sucks. <laughs> Let me say that again. Do not use that example. It's way too wordy. My wife says this about mission statements. She says, you've got to know it cold and deliver it hot, meaning like an elevator speech. It should be two or three sentences long that you know and that really epitomizes into a few words what it is that you want to happen as a result of you selling real estate. All right? If you were here on the 20th when I talked, I said, how many people sell real estate that don't have a passion for it? And most of the room raised their hand. I said, I don't sell real estate because I have a passion for it. I have a passion for for what I can do with the money. One of the greatest CEOs or chairman of the boards I've ever met of a, of a $4 billion a year company said one day on stage, he said, the purpose of a business is profit. The purpose of profit is to change the world, right? I'm not in love with selling homes after 39 freaking years, okay, I'm not. But I'm in love with what I can do with the money and how I can change lives with that. Do you get that? That's what I want you thinking about when you do your mission statement is, what is the real reason I'm doing this? Yes, we all know that money is, but when you get the money, how will you change the world with it? What will you do with that? What do people walk away with when they do it? I sell much, much fewer homes today than I ever have in units, but I gotta tell you, I'm connecting so well with my clients. So I want you to be thinking about that when you do your mission statement. Know it cold, deliver it hot. Brent. So oh, you got on that note, they gave yeah, you I got my own That's, mic, right, enough good. of that, you know. <laughs> so uh, basically, you know, when you're doing an open house and you've been there for two hours and nobody's inside and it gets kind of depressing, the mission statement would be a really good thing to read. But do you even have it? Do you keep it in front of you? Do you read it? You know, what are you doing this for? I remember when I was doing my career doing open houses in Antelope. Anybody know the suburb of Antelope? And I've told you the story, a lot of you have heard of it, half of you haven't. But I remember nobody was there, 
I got a wife and two little kids to feed. I have six now, by the way. Not wives, children. Okay? <laughs> so clarify. Uh, one wife, 27 years. That, that is awesome. But, um, but I remember nobody coming, and I needed money. Anybody got bills to pay? So did we. And my kids are young. They're like three and five. And I remember literally being in the back patio, which is, what, what's a patio for? A place to hold cats, right? And so I am laying on the ground on my knees, begging God to send somebody through the door because I needed to make a living for my family. Anybody been there? And then, and, then, and then after a while, I'm like, forget this. I'm just, I'm laying down flat, my hands out. And I'm literally like, you did this? Yeah. I got up, cat hair all over me. <laughs> Disgusting. But it's times like that. You find out what you're made of. If you've got the chutzpah, if you've got the, the horsepower. And I'm just saying, God, please help me. And the next thing I know, man, you call it what you want. But ding dong, there goes the doorbell. And, and uh, you know, humble is on the menu. Humble is good. And then um, you dig down deep. So this mission statement, we're going to give you a few minutes on to do here right now. We want this to be a working workshop. You leave here with actionable items. We're going to get you started. We don't expect them to finish it. And we think you should text it to Rick or me or whoever you have in your life and go, what do you think about this? What needs to change? And have it printed out in front of you. So do you want to chime any more before we release it? Yeah, I just want to say... Uh, I've had people all the time. Uh, my wife, uh, several of you know my wife. She's in a major network marketing company. And when we go to that company in, Salt, in Provo, Utah, their mission statement is on the walls. If you stop any employee, they know what it is. You really want to internalize this. But the reason I said that is you can Google mission statements for any major company and start to realize what message they're giving with it and use that as yours. So if you start with a few ideas today about why you do this, how do you like people to feel once they've done a sale with you, what do you want the world to know about you. Every, a lot of people use the word service in there, but service to every one of you is the same word as success. Everybody, it means something different to everyone. So start thinking about that. But don't be afraid to Google those things and find out what others' examples are. Is that, you know, your mentors can be people that don't know you and don't even know you exist just by Googling their information or watching podcasts or YouTube, whatever. So go sit down, and, I mean, get to writing some stuff down right now that'll give you a head start when you come back to the booklet later. We're going to put some music on and we're going to give you two or three minutes here. Just head down and just think about it. Give it some thoughts. So here we go. go. And one of the things that you could also do to help your mission statement project is to understand and know your core values. Words like honesty, integrity, reputation, community, communication, uh, punctuality, whatever your core values are, uh, the word service, whatever it means to you, get those core values down, pick four or five or six words that really, really represent you and your core values, and what that will serve to do. First, it will help you with your mission statement. Second, the more you internalize and energize those core values, that will be the kind of people you attract into your business. We all want to have clients that we identify and align with. I, I have a friend of mine who's in the real estate business, and I will never say what state this person is in or whether they're a male or a female for fear someone could identify them. But this person is all about drama all the time, all the time. And when I get calls from this person for support, it's to tell me how much drama there is between her and her clients. Oops, I just said she was a she, sorry. But you still don't know what state she's in. She's definitely not in California. So, but the reason I say that is I'm never surprised to get the calls because her whole life is about drama. What's the energy you're putting out? And if the energy is about your core values, that's the kind of person you're going to attract. All of that has to come out in your mission statement. I know that sounds like a big project, but just say, I want to attract people like me. So how do I have to be to attract those people? I've got to be the way my core values say. So think about that when you're doing your mission statement. I hope all of you go home tonight and just really get by the fireplace, get a coffee, hot tea, glass of wine, whatever your deal is, and really spend some time after you put the kids to bed thinking about this. This stuff doesn't happen by accident, you know? They first built a model of, of the, you know, Apollo spacecraft, and then they did all the homework, and then they did it, and they landed a man on the moon, right? But you got to just start small and then build out. And that's what today is about. So go home. I know tomorrow, that was Friday, I'm golfing like I always do at Yochidihi, but then I get done, we're spending probably eight hours um, there doing business planning and just polishing everything. We'll know every single 
family trip, every single business trip. We'll have goals for every aspect of the business, P&Ls, nonprofits, you know, all that stuff. And you think, wow, that sounds impressive. Yeah, but after 30 years, you kind of figure it out. Like, well, I haven't done that. This is your day. This is your time. But I'm begging you to put a lot into it. So we're going to switch gears here, right? Yep. Okay, we're going to move on. And remember, you have access to us. You're going to see a slide at the end of the at the end of the pro program that will give you a way to have this workbook emailed to you so you can print up many copies. But again, it takes action on your part. Uh, so remember that. Let's flip to the next page. It's about the SWAT, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now, um, one of the things I love about working side by side with Brent is we think differently about the real estate business. And we understand as friends and as businessmen that there isn't a good or bad or right or wrong. There's just what works. And let me remind you that one of the things we say in coaching all the time, because people say, well, does that idea work? And we want to look at them and go, do you work? <laughs> the idea is everything works, nothing doesn't. Right? So people get so caught up in paralysis analysis that they go, well, that's a really great idea. We'll leave it at that. No. Move into action. You don't like it. Somebody was telling me today, a buyer's agent on one of the teams I coach, that she doesn't like calling this kind of call a particular kind of call. And I said, all right, what kind of calls do you like making? So it's not about coaching people to where you want them to be. It's where do you want to be? Where, what kind of calls are most comfortable for you? No calls get you how much business? None, right. Nothing works, right? Everything works, nothing doesn't. So pick something, and everything will be uncomfortable. Some of them will be less uncomfortable, and those are the ones you want to attract for yourself. Rick, right. do, you, do you think this is a fair statement? It, I have tried so many things where it's called, I've called expireds. I've called for sale by owners. I honestly, I've never door knocked. I haven't done this. Probably the only thing I haven't done. I've done radio. I've done TV. I've done open houses. I've done by referral only. I've done internet leads. I mean, I have tried and tried and tried. And would you agree? Probably the reason we're up here is because we're two of the biggest failures in the room. We have <laughs> failed at more things, right? I mean, more people have told us no. I was but, hoping you wouldn't say that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. But isn't that true? I mean, it it's absolutely true. is. And then we found what works. For some of you, it's absolutely true. Do, do not. I mean, look, the young gentleman about to take a sip. If you don't mind me asking you, how old are you? 38. So I think the underwear I'm wearing are older than that. The point is <laughs> that, that after 39 years of selling real estate, I don't think anybody gets into a career and plans on still doing that unless you have so many financial failures along the way. Right? And, but what it did, it led me to today, which has been, is the most amazing life I could have ever dreamed of living right this minute. And I don't attach it anymore to finance, but I did. I tell people all the time, I can get you to where I am in 39 years in five years. Now, how do you do that? I go, I eliminate 34 years of mistakes. It's very easy. It's so true. It is. It's you so know true. you could coach somebody right now to get Absolutely. where you are today in two years from brand new. Right. Yeah. I think most people are so afraid to risk their ego we, with open houses. It doesn't feel good when you try to get someone's name and information and they go, sweetheart, we have your card. We'll call you. You guys do realize what that means. It means we are never going to call you and that's just my exit plan B. And you guys, okay, call me, email me, and you're not going to hear from them. So you got to learn how to get. So my advice to you before we do the SWAT is fail often and fail fast. And guess what? I mean, if you play golf once or twice a year, you're going to be terrible. Um, the reason I'm a decent golfer today, I've been playing every Friday for 20 years. Some of you are cross-country skiers or climbers or, or, or you know, snowboarders, and you're really good because you do it all the time. And you just got to say, you know what? I don't care anymore. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I want it so bad, I'm going to scream. And it's not because you want money or a Rolex or a, a big house. It's because you just want things to be different for your family. Can anybody relate? And when you get to that point where you are like, frustrated and you quit blaming Remax or Coldwell Banker or Lions or EXP or Keller Williams or your mother or your daddy or whatever it is, right? When you stop blaming other people and you take responsibility for saying, you know, I am where I am and we've all, anybody here had some crummy things happen to you in your past? I mean, we could share horror stories. We got them. We all have them, okay? And guess what? You just got to stop it. If uh, what's the saying? Excuses are like armpits. Everyone's got a couple, and they stink, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you you get what you focus on. Start 
looking at gratitude and focus on what you want. So let's dive into the SWOT analysis. Right. We got to get cranking. Strengths. <laughs> All right. So Brent's, Brent's golf is me sleeping in Sunday mornings. I've been sleeping in once a week for 50 years, and I've gotten very good at it <laughs> on Sunday mornings. <laughs> I am. People tell me all the time, they go, how? You get up at 435, and on Sundays you sleep till 10. How do you do that? I go, I keep my eyes closed and stay in bed. <laughs> so, I mean, it's very simple. Anyway, so SWAT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Very important that you read the instruction sheet, not right now, but I'm going to give you some brief instructions because this is a very vital part of it. We do not see our blind spots. Look at the first sheet that says SWAT, and look up there on the top right where it says SWAT. Underneath it, it says to be filled out by you, doesn't it? Yes or no? Yes or no? Thank you. It's participatory. So what I want you to do is understand that this, strengths and weaknesses are about you, this, me, the project God gave me. This is a project. I got to work on me and my strengths and weaknesses. Opportunities and threats. Look on the instruction sheet. It says external. Do you see that next to the word opportunities and threats on the instruction sheet? Do you see that? Do you see that? That's four of you now. Okay, good. Notice next to strengths and weaknesses, it says internal. That's because that's about you. External, for all of us real estate agents who are control freaks, which is every real estate agent ever, External means the things you do not control. We had the horrible fires in, in Paradise. Within 30 days of the fires, the average sale price in the town of Chico went up $51,000 in one month. Is a fire an opportunity or a threat? Don't answer because it's up to you individually to decide if it's an opportunity or a threat. Napa and Santa Rosa are having the best real estate year they've ever had in the history of their MLS. Why? Yes. Opportunity or threat. Interest rates went up last December, not this past one, but the one before. And I remember my phone ringing off the hook. This December, the interest rates went up. My phone was silent for about 10 days, and then all of a sudden it blew up. Interest rates increase. Opportunity or threat. Inventory increase. Opportunity or threat. That's what I want you thinking when you do your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now, flip to the, before we, we're not, we're going to give you some time to fill them out, but now flip to the second SWAT page. And I want you to look in the top right corner and tell me what it says under the words. Yes, to pick four people you know. Look at the word it says, well. Four people you know well and give them this form. All right? Now, when you give them this form, you need to say, I want you to be brutally honest. If your spouse or significant other is not in the real estate industry, give them one. If they are, do not. Let them take care of their own. But if they are in the real estate industry, you need to say, I promise if you will be brutally honest, I will with not, not withhold sex. I want the honest truth about this form. Because they will... Why are only the women laughing? The men are going... <laughs> I know. <laughs> she said the men would never say that. <laughs> They're not withholding anyway, right? You could have it any time you want, honey. Um, but the reason I say that is this. What happens when you, you don't warn me? <laughs> but I want you to think about this. Do they see blind spots that you don't see? If you look at my, the one I did in October of this, for me and myself and my team, on my strengths, it says patience. I gave it to my wife. Guess what's on one of my weaknesses? What? Yeah, no patience. I gave it to my assistant who's in the business with me, right? She's my assistant. She put, no patience. And I went, what? <laughs> she goes, I need say no more when, when I scream like that. So I want you to understand that one of the most powerful parts about this exercise is those four that you give away to other people to bring them back. I had a guy say, well, Rick, we don't want them doing opportunities and threats. They don't know our business, so they wouldn't know what an opportunity or threat is. Highly disagree. The fact is, they know opportunities and threats from their perspective, and that's what we want. We want to hear what other people who know us are thinking about what we do for a living. And ladies and gentlemen, when was the last time your loved ones really did deeply understand what you do? I'm in the relationship business. I'm in the people business. I'm in the, you know, backyard business. No, you're not. You're in the lead generating business, and you haven't stopped to tell your loved ones because they will smack you for never lead generating in front of them. Right? 
No one? Okay. Uh, hold on. I, I got to chime in on that. Yeah. Do not let that go by you. How many of you, if you had, um, you know, five or ten buyers that want to buy, like, now, would that help you? Well, you need 30 or 40 or 50 to get the ones you want to buy now. But because you have one or two, because you haven't figured out you're in the lead generation business, you don't always have what they've been looking for six months. I, I get these people, I will sell them a house if it kills me. I used to, it almost did, right? And so what it is, is you need to figure out, like listings. How many of you would go on a listing appointment every day for the next three weeks? Would you? Do it. I mean, you, if you get half the listings out of 21, that'd be like 10, right? And would that help your business or not? Well, then go do it. Well, I, I don't have the leads. I don't. Aha. So the opportunity is you need to master lead generation is your only problem, is that you are weak at lead generation because you won't risk your precious ego. I mean, ego, you got an unlimited amounts. You just won't. You'd rather write a check for $10,000 and try TV. You'd rather pay for a billboard at $4,000 a month than risk your precious ego. You'd rather spend all your money, put a second on your home than risk your ego. And if you will just get over it and say, I don't care anymore. I care more about my husband, my wife, my kids. You will kill it. Do you agree? Or? Absolutely. 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 And I've been there. I was telling somebody the other day that it wasn't very many years ago that I pulled up to a gas station in my 2005 Volvo SUV. Uh, this was, I'll be honest with you, 2009, and could not find any way to purchase gas. And I looked everywhere. I opened my glove compartment, and I found two $50 gas cards that the Women's Council of Realtors Club in the uh, Solano County had given me for doing a speech for free. And that was the only way I filled my car that day. That was not very many years ago. And before you think whatever of that, he owned five Keller Williams seven. seven Keller Williams franchise at that moment. And when he finally disentangled himself from all those, uh, how, do you want to tell him how much you owed in rent, commercial rent, when it was all? I had one point seven. seven million in unpaid rents. So. It, <laughs> You never know what people are going through. Today, I talked to a gentleman who owned a franchise. I won't name the franchise. But he literally, he goes, I've been skiing in Vail. I'm so excited. I got out of it 10 days ago. Way to go. You sold your franchise and you went skiing. You're having some fun. He goes, no, no, no. I didn't make any money. It cost me $100,000 to get out of it because it was a sucking vortex for cash. And uh, so he's coming to Scottsdale in two weeks. We're yeah. excited about that. But we're off track. Go yeah, ahead. so the main point there is that you don't want to, have any of you ever caught yourself doing this? And I really want you to be honest, especially before your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Because I know one of my weaknesses is something I'm working on every day, which is comparing my insides to other people's outsides. And the thing is, when, what I say by meaning that is if you've ever looked at somebody, like even last night, watching Rachel Hollis's movie, I had a realization during the movie that she was doing a lot of the things that I want to do, that I want to be... I want to be speaking at a bigger level, change lives at a bigger level. And this is what I started to do. Her husband, do any of you know what her husband was? He was, the distrib he was in charge of all of Disney movies, which is five different movie companies for distribution for them. So, of course, my mind goes, well, of course he was able to get her movie into a very high visual movie theater like this all over the world because he's been in distribution. What is that me doing? Yep. Me comparing their their insides with my outsides or my outsides with theirs. We don't know what they had to go through, and I don't want to know. I love my life, and believe me, I don't want other people's headaches. I have enough of my own. I'm good. But to catch myself doing that as a coach and a speaker is vital, that I caught myself doing it, saying, oh, look at her. Of course she's in the movie. Her husband's a bull. You want something bad enough, you will go get it, period, end of sentence. She wanted it worse than I did at 35 years old, Okay. So look at that paper. We're going to give you a few minutes to get going on it. Work on your strengths and weaknesses. Opportunities and threats are pretty easy. You know, you got cold, you got winter. We look at Minnesota people. They've got to understand that the winter's coming and people just stay in the house. Like, I've got coaching clients in every state in the country. So think about that. Have at it. Very young lady, 35. Um, and I said, give me an example of what your day is like. This was in 30, well... I've been speaking and coaching agents for about 25 years. So in 25 years of speaking and coaching to agents, I've never heard a more honest answer. She said, well, I get up, and when I get up around 7 or so, I can smell the coffee because I have my ma coffee machine timed to start making the coffee before it's time to get up. So I walk into the kitchen, 
and I get myself my cup of coffee. That's the first thing I do. She said, then I spend some time having a quick bite of breakfast and playing with my dogs. And I said, okay, because she paused, so I thought she wanted me to say, okay, right? And then she goes, then I spend the next four hours avoiding any kind of lead generation. <laughs> she said, by now I'm hungry, so I'll go to lunch. I get back from lunch and I'll spend those next four hours avoiding any kind of marketing or personal communication. She said, by now I'm exhausted, I'll come home, play with the dogs, have some dinner, and watch some TV and go to bed. Is that honesty? It is, I was just saying this young lady right here had written down in one of her weaknesses, her first weakness she wrote down lead gen, her second was lead follow up. Those are the two most basics, and she's willing to be honest enough that the two most basic things in our business, lead generation and lead follow-up, are her weaknesses. That's where this starts to really make a difference, when you get really honest with you. The rest of us aren't going to have our lives change whether you do or don't sell other houses. You will. That's what that honesty is about. Thank you for letting me see that. All right. All right, so again, you're going to have to finish some of the stuff tonight, tomorrow, this weekend, but you must make time. Where's James? Uh, James in the back. All the way in the back. James has been helping me run my company for, what's it been, two years now, three years? How long? <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. Eight. It's not been eight years. Come on. Has it been eight years, six I years? I never know which of them to believe, really. Can you believe it's this? Been, like... It's been about six years, right? Let's call Christina Gove. She can tell Hold us on. the truth. What? <laughs> doesn't matter. All right. But here's the deal. Every year we carve out time and spend an entire day. Well, that's because you have a big business. No, we did this when our business was small. And, and, and we really, I mean, the first time we really done it, because I let it get away from me a little bit by 2009, I think I remember going through the toll bridges and not having the money to pay the three bucks for the toll at Benicia, right? And, um, and we were losing 40, 50, 60,000 a month a month, not a year, a month, and and uh, and just you know blowing through and just getting the ticket and figure out how I'll pay that later. I mean, there were some hard times. I know people who lived in Los Lagos, like Black Hawk Danville, who live in apartments now, who owned 600 apartments complexes. I mean, we all have our stories and and things that happen to us. So, um, but basically, you got to set the time aside to do this stuff and really be purposeful. And, and, and it, what do you want? Um, Ziegler, uh, probably one of the best ones, because we're going to everyone turn to business objectives. The next page. And this is one of my favorite pages. I love doing this. Now, basically, you know, what do you want your life to be like in the next five to 10 years? And most people, uh, you know, they, they, you know, they think they don't realize what you could do in the next six months. Your life could be completely radically different in 90 days. But you just don't believe it. Because you don't believe it, it doesn't happen. And so um, I love Zig Ziglar. He tells the story of Archerist Howard Hill. Raise your hand if you've heard me tell the story. A few of you? Okay, nobody? Okay, so it's a great story. Zig Ziglar. Howard Hill, true story. I love true stories. Uh, at the turn of the century, he was an he was a archerist, famous archerist. They would have turkey shoots, and people put up their twenty five dollars. And in nineteen hundred and five, twenty five dollars was a lot of money. And uh, he 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 win every one of them. He became so famous. He was the Tiger Woods, the Michael Jordan, the Muhammad Ali of archery. That when they heard he entered, nobody else would enter. It became a problem at the point where he could no longer compete. You know why? Because he won every time he'd get everybody's money. Nobody wanted to lose their money. They wanted to have a, a chance. Well, this guy was so naturally gifted that he, he literally could hit the bullseye every single time. They have old-fashioned black and white footage of this guy. He'd hit the center of the bullseye. He'd pull another arrow out back up, and he'd split the tip of the arrow he hit the bullseye with, split the shaft. And this guy had incredible hand-eye coordination. I don't know what his vision was and nerves of steel, but he was one talented, like, phenom, like once in a hundred years kind of human being. And Zig Ziglar says this, in a matter of about 60 seconds, I could have every one of you in the audience shooting better than Howard Hill. And you're like, really? That's ridiculous, Zig. I mean, the guy was, nope, you, nope, 60 seconds. He was provided we blindfold Howard Hill, spin him around and around in circles, and then say, let the games begin, leaving the blindfold on Howard Hill. How many think you could beat Howard Hill? Well, that's ridiculous. 
I mean, the man can't even see the, the, the target. He can't even see the bullseye. And then Zig Ziglar says, precisely. How can you hit a goal you don't have? That was my best Zig Ziglar kind of strange thing, right? He says, you're just wanting it to be better, and you have no clear-cut objective. Like, this will happen today. If it kills me, it's going to happen. And you clean your garage. And you take stuff to Goodwill. And you clean your closet. You do things you're in control of. And I will do an open house Saturday and Sunday. And I'm going to start at 8 a.m. And I'm going to go till 9 at night. Do you got bills to pay? You might want to think about getting out there at 6 and working till 10. Do you remember the Great Depression? Do you guys remember World War II and what happened when, when, when Europe was just in shambles and how hard people had to work? And you wonder why people come here? from other parts of the country, and become millionaires. I have a friend who, who came from Vietnam. He grew up in, 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 in intern camps. And he owns multiple, multiple, multiple convenience stores across Texas. And money is no issue for him. And he's old. He's like 41. Okay? But they see the opportunity that we don't see because we're so worried about our ego. I always bring it back to that. So business objectives. So I'm going to give you some. I wrote down some. We're going to let you write them down right now. But I want to just get, I'm going to chum the water. Like how about five-year plan? Again, even think out 10 years. Without a vision, people perish. You've got to have a vision, a goal. So long-term five-year plan. How about this? Maybe for this is 10 years, but pay off the house. How would you like to have a, a, your no house payment? Just your property taxes due every year, right? How about this? Travel twice a year to Hawaii and the Caribbean. Or maybe for you, it's you know, Australia and Europe. I don't know, but for me, I'm a Hawaii Caribbean guy, so I wrote that. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and then how about this one? Debt-free and current on taxes. Some of you, maybe, maybe that's important to you. Maybe you're not debt-free and you're not current on your taxes. How about this? I'm just chumming the water here. One-year goals. You ready? How about this? Have 300 people in my database. Sell my first million-dollar home. For those of you in the Bay Area, sell my first $5 million home, right? Like here, a million-dollar home, I remember it was two years before I sold a home over $100,000. Two years! It was in Orangeville, $128,000. I was so excited. I'm like, getting the money, baby! And then years ago, I said, if it's under three dollars I'm not even going to touch it, right? But... Um, but maybe it's sell your first million dollar home. And then what do you do? Maybe you should attain some luxury. The goal makes you go, okay, how am I going to do that? Maybe I should attain, attend some luxury marketing masterminds or go get a luxury certification. And I have a friend, Michael Lafito. He trains people. He sells 30 and $50 million homes in Chicago. Well, that's in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago is, a lot of it's like Sacramento. And then they have the big, expensive, old wealth. But he is in there, and, and he'll teach you how to do it. How about this one-year goal? Make $100,000 in the next 12 months. For some of you, you're new in the business. That would be a great first year. For some of you, it's make 300000 or 200000 wherever it is. And then, and then you back it up. How about a six-month? You ready? How about this? Hire my first assistant. That could be a good six-month goal for some of you. Like, oh, my gosh, I I'm not even selling real estate. Again, when you have the vision, some of you are selling two, three, four homes a month, and you, you're doing it all yourself. Here's the deal. If assistants will typically run how much an hour? Anybody want to throw some numbers out? 15. He's from the Bay Area, 20. 15 bucks an hour, you can get a great assistant. Um, I had a friend of mine put an ad out for a $15 an hour job. She had 200 college applicants apply with degrees for a $15 an hour job. Sharp, young, go-getters, people that are smarter than you. Well, I'm not good at the Internet. Well, they are. And they could work for you, but I can't afford it. Again, there's your limiting belief. Listen to me. How much is your time worth an hour? You ever done that? Well, if I hit my goals and I make $100,000 this year and I put this much time in, divide out, figure out what it is an hour. For some of you, it's $30, $50, $80 an hour. Some of you, it's $100, $200 an hour. So why don't you have an assistant? A, you're a control freak, right? B, B, you're like, well, I can't afford it because I need all two, three hundred thousand a year. Listen to me. If you don't have an assistant, you are one. It, write that down. If I don't have an assistant, I am one. 
When I hired, I went to Craig Proctor. I flew to Toronto, and, and first by myself, I, I was just me. It was 1999, and that was 19 years ago, and he was the number one REMAX agent in the world, out producing 128,000 other agents from a farm town like Lincoln, California, like Yuba City. He had 60,000 people. He's selling 600 homes a year in a town of 60,000 people. Yeah, I got my butt on a plane and flew 3,000 miles to Toronto, Ontario, and listened to the man. And guess what? He changed my life. He challenged me. So I came home and hired a friend of mine named Sandra. Single mom went to my church, two little girls. She was praying to God for a job so she could just buy some groceries. I was praying to God for the right person to help. And what I gave her was flexibility. I go, I don't care if you work 8 to noon, 10 to 2, 1 to 4. If your kids get sick, I'll give you the day off. I'll work with you. You can bring your kids to work if you need to. And, and I said, look, I don't know if I can have you work for me more than three months. I'll make a three-month commitment. If this doesn't work out, uh, then I, I, you know, she goes, I'll take the job. Three months later, I doubled her pay. I had tripled my income in three months. Because Mr. Gove was no longer calling the pest company. You don't need to be the one to call the pest company. I didn't have to call the title company and book the 3 o'clock signing and play phone tag because the escrow officer was busy. And then call the guy. You don't need to do any of that stuff. I learned to make a list every day and give that to my now assistant who was working four hours a day. She wanted a part-time job. It was perfect because I, you know, where am I going to get the money to pay her, right? Uh, 20 hours a week. And, um, and then all of a sudden, I started, it worked, after the first year, my income was just exploding. I go, hey, I'm going to give you a raise, $1,000 every year you work for me, 1000 a month, not a year. By the time she found this rich commercial agent, thank God, she was making like eight or 9000 a month as my personal assistant. And that year, I think I made $3.8 million. Yeah, but... Had I not said, you know, I'm going to take a stab in the dark. Some of you are so afraid to help to hire someone. You don't know they're the answer to your dreams, your prayers, and, and you're the ans- they're the answer to yours, and you're the answer to theirs. You could change some grandmother's life. You could change some single mom's life or some poor, starving, you know, guy's life or whatever. I mean, you connect with who you connect with, but get on with it. I would give her a list of 10, 15, 20 things to do every day, and it would be just handled. How many would like that? So that might be one of your goals in six months. Somehow, some way, I'm going to hire my first assistant. It could be three days. Okay, so I'm going to release you to this, but how about this? Start and build your database to 100. Hire a real estate coach. Master lead generation. You know, what is it you want to do in the next six months? Because you could change your life if you just get on with it. So we're going to go ahead and start the music and let you have a few minutes to do this. You want to say something before we launch them? Really quick. Remember the book from 1989 called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Habit number two was begin with the end in mind. Brent told you, like it says right on the page, five years. So if you look at the five-year plan, it makes planning from today forward so much easier. If you start at five years, then look at either three years. It doesn't give you a three-year, but you could put three years, one year, six months. And then today, looking forward, you'll be easy, easily able to back it out. So five years from now, you want to do a million in GCI, in 2019, you're doing 200,000 in GCI, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So think yeah. about it as you go forward. Absolutely. So go ahead and start your planning. I start with, with my coaching clients. I, I coach for a company called Workman Success Systems. And with my coaching clients, we give them the reminder. They always have access to the business planning work because when we're coaching people, you know, twice a month, every month of the year, we're asking them on July 1st to look at their, goal, their, their uh, business plan again and say, do we want to recalculate? Do we want to readjust? But then in September, we start telling them, it's time to get your 2019 uh, business plan ready. And we tell them that because we're hoping that if we keep reminding them that we'll have a completed business plan by October 31st, two full months. And you would be surprised how many of my coaching clients are just now, January 3rd, January 4th, January 2nd, getting me their business plan, even though they said they started working on it in September 2nd on the first week of September. What I want you to remember is that if you commit quality time, the total amount of time this should take you is about seven hours, including getting the four SWATs back and really planning, like sitting down, taking a deep breath. If you have a significant other, 
This is not something you do alone. Yeah, there's a lot of it that your significant other, if they're not in the business, doesn't have anything to do with it. But then when you start planning the part that involves your life, you cannot plan your real estate business, ladies and gentlemen, without planning your life. Uh, that's very important for you to understand. Human beings are very predictable. The way they do one thing is the way they do everything. Um, I was just talking to somebody in the room. Uh, I insist to my coaching clients that they have a minimum of one date night a week with their significant other. And typically, we like to insist that's without technology. Some people like to take their phone anyway as a camera, and I get that. Uh, but if you're not having a date night a week with your significant other, in addition to other time with your children or your other loved ones, then I'm asking you, why are you even selling real estate? Is it to avoid family? If that's the case, just get the damn divorce and move on. But the point is, this is supposed to augment our life, not destroy it, okay? So think about that when you're doing your business plan. Now let's move on to the next page, which says, if you look at the top, personal objectives. And the reason we put this in is exactly what I just said. You've, if the business objectives is done right, I mean, you could do the business objectives. There was a gentleman in the personal development world named Brian Clemmer. I don't know if any of you ever heard of Brian Clemmer. Uh, I've done a lot of work with PSI seminars, and he started his work in, um, in personal development under Thomas Wilhite, who started PSI seminars. Anyway, long story short, when he died, they found his 500-year plan. 500-year plan. So just incredible what people can do in terms of looking forward. So on that business objectives, don't hesitate to do 20, 10, 5, 3, 1, whatever you want. Just look outwards. Now, personal objectives. Look at that page. And down at the bottom, I want you to add something that's not there. I want you to add the sixth F, and that is finances. So you have what? I think it starts with friends, faith. Is that what it is? Friends, faith. I'm going by memory. Fun. Oh, friends. Yeah. All of those six, those exact six. Yeah, what is it? Is it? Does it go family, faith, fun, friends, friends, fitness? Yeah. Every time I hear the word fitness on my sister-in-law's refrigerator, she's 40 years old, never been married, doesn't have any kids, and that's because she spends two hours a day doing food prep. She works out nine times a week. She runs marathons. She does all that. I go, you wonder why you don't have a wife or kids. I mean, a husband or kids. But she said on her, on her refrigerator is a picture of a pug, you know, a pug dog. And um, at the top of it, it says fitness. And underneath of the pug is this huge pepperoni pizza. He says, fitness for me is about fitness whole pizza in my mouth. <laughs> I always think of that when the word fitness comes up. So, all right. Uh, real quick, Rick, I want to yeah. say this. Yeah. When, you, when you're talking about your family, your friends, having, a, having balance, having fun, not just all, right, all work and no play, you'll be more productive if you're having fun. I mean, if you're working seven days right now, you're blowing it, man. You're, you need a day to refresh yourself. I mean, God took a day to rest, right? But not you. Somehow you could just keep going 40 days, 80 days, 200 days without rest. Yeah. But here's the deal. We'll tell you, take a day off, put your stupid phone in the glove box, turn it off. Well, my clients, let it go. I've lost business over it, but I have a, a life I'm proud of, I'm happy of, and uh, that sort of thing. But here's the deal. All this stuff, it's like balls. Do we juggle a lot of balls? We're talking about a lot of balls juggle, right? Yeah. And I've heard this. There's one that is made out of crystal, and that's your family. You drop that baby, you can't get it back. The rest will bounce. They'll, walk, they'll bounce off of the corner. You can walk back over there and pick up that ball and get your real estate business refired up, right? You could start uh, having fun. You can go pick that one up, but the family one you can't. And so that's why we're talking about intentionality. Yes. And, and I'll say this before we release you, or he'll, he'll wrap it up. But if you went on your next date, like I take my wife out twice a week, every Wednesday night, every Saturday night, we go out. And I leave my phone either in the car or I turn it off and put it in her purse. Why do I do that? Because I want to be there. I've learned to be present. And then ask her all kinds of questions about her goals, her dreams, the kids, how's it going, how can I help? And I am like completely in the moment. Like, oh, well, that's so good. I was a loser for a long time, okay? That took me a long time to learn how to do that in marriage counseling and, and thousands of dollars in therapy and, and all that. But we're, we can help him through our pain, right, Rick? Yes, he was a learner, not a loser, that's all. He just learned his way through it. <laughs> I did the same thing. All That's right. why I'm on my second marriage, Brent, and you're on your first. So, all right. I'll get there. So, <laughs> Kidding. I was totally kidding. My wife said she's too busy to come today, so I, I can no do whatever I want. I have no answer to that. 
All right, so what I want to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, is that there's, there's family, faith, friends, fitness, and finance. Notice I left out fun. Those are all about how are you going to interact with the people that qualify under that heading, okay? The beliefs or the people. Keep in mind that other than the word fun, those are about your relationship with something in your life. Family, friends, faith, uh, spirituality, whatever you want to call that. Certainly your relationship with finances. Um, and then, of course, your relationship with fitness, which has to do with nutrition, health, how you feel. Um, one of the things that resonated with me in the Rachel Hollis thing last night is she had this big, huge seminar called Rise that she's doing all over the world. And she asked, all, it was all women. I would have gone if I could have been to one of those. But she asked all the women, how many of you um, hate how you look? Please stand up. And every 800 women stood up. Right? I don't know what it is about you women in your thighs. You don't like your thighs. You don't like something. But it's about being grateful for exactly where you are. And what I want you to look at on this personal objectives, because it makes a big part of your life and it makes selling real estate more fun, is what will I change about how I interact with those words this year? I'll give you an example. I entered into this marriage next week. Next Wednesday is my fourth anniversary to this amazing woman that I somehow got gifted from God to have in my life. And she has changed my life. But I realized at a very quick stage, I entered the marriage with over 200000 in debt to the IRS and a very huge monthly uh, bill to my ex uh, and then a big, huge bill of over two hundred grand in arrears to my ex. Okay? So as of December 30th of this year, of 2018, all of that's paid off. Right? But wait a minute. If it were up to me, I'd be deeper in debt because I don't, I, I'm generous. I want to give my money away. I want to help people. I want to hear this, that. But I, com I surrendered, this control freak person surrendered, and it was like I got a twitch from surrendering my checks. Because my checks would come in, and, and, and I used to go, oh, my checks are in. I could spend some money. And then now, starting, it was actually starting January of 2016, every check I got, I gave to my wife. And magically, $500,000 appeared. It, did, it wasn't magic. It was me selling houses and her deciding how to split that money up. So that here we are. We just wrote a check on December 30th to my ex for $190,000. Wrote a check. Biggest check I've ever written in my life. Right? And her and I was in Arizona getting the cashier's check from a Wells Fargo while I was doing a business planning class. And she was here in Pleasant Hill at our home, and we were both like FaceTiming, crying our eyes out that that happened. I want you to understand that when you get to finances or fitness, you have to decide what you're willing to do because you're going to have to give something up. And it's a, what you're giving up is something that you do based on a trigger, right? I just had a chocolate chip cookie because I was triggered with hunger, right? It's a trigger, but my trigger for hunger is go get fun food. But at least now at 173 pounds, not three years ago when I was two, 203 pounds, my trigger took me the rest of the day eating that kind of stuff. Now I know how to control it. I can have a chocolate chip cookie. I'm good. I'm not going to have three like I normally would have. Do you get that? You're going to have to give something up. What is it? And whatever that is, is something that right now makes you feel good inside and later makes you feel like crap. So when you're looking at these personal objectives, know what it is you have to get, give up. Do you, have, you might, under family, have to give up feeling like your mom is always wrong because your mom always wants to be right. How many of you have a mother that bugs you? Don't raise your hand because people will report you. <laughs> but how many of you have a, a dad or, or a significant other, not a significant other, a significant person in your, rela in your family that they just bug the crap out of you? But maybe you heard from a friend, they're going to bug the crap out of you, but it's a lot better to have them bug the crap out of you than not have them in your life at all. Right? So you have to start looking at that and saying, what do I want to give up? But it also may be I'm just going to distance myself from that relative because I can't do it anymore and I want to live a happy life. Right? Make the decision, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. These personal objectives are vital or you're not going to love, you're not going to love selling real estate. That's why I love my life so much now because I've set my personal objectives and I'm willing to stand in my truth. Meaning whether people like it or not and I get a storm for my truth, I'm still standing in my truth. Okay? Yep. So I really want you to take this seriously. Brent? I had somebody at the break uh, that came in and go, didn't we do this last year? I go, 
We do it every year, right? <laughs> Business people, this is what you do every year. You take inventory of your life. And, and maybe last year you just killed it with your spouse, but you didn't pay attention to your teenage kids or your, your five-year-old enough. At my team meeting, I had somebody in the room who I'm making eye contact with right now who says, I want to connect on a better level with my five-year-old. That is awesome, right? And you realize, yeah, I'm nailing this, but I need work here. And um, heard someone say balance. You know, you got to be in balance. There's, there's no such thing. I mean, you do your best. You kind of you kind of hit it, then you go this way, then you hit it, and you go this way, and you're always bringing it back. But it's by taking inventory of your life, right, Rick? And so here's your chance. We're going to take a few minutes here, and you get to take inventory of your life in these areas. So go ahead and start the music and go. Who could tell me what the greatest room in the world is? Anyone know the, gra- the biggest room in the world? It's the room for improvement. We all agree? I mean, who here is perfect? Stand up. We will beat you up right now, okay? There's nobody here who's got their stuff together that good. We all can be better at within our marriages. If you're married as, as a mom or a dad, if you're a parent, as a friend, um, I bought my team all the book, The Friendship Factor by Alan Lloyd McGinnis today. How many, we ordered, how many of those books we ordered there? 20 books. Can't get them. They're out of print. We had to go to used books or something. He got them. Yeah. So it's a great book, though, but you're going to get better. So what I'm going to do before we go through the goal achievement system is I have a special guest speaker for you because one of your goals may be to buy a, your first investment property this year or to start flipping homes and flip two or three homes this year. So what would that mean? You set the goal and you think, maybe I need to get around investors. Maybe I get around people who do this and learn from them. So you'd want to come to an investment group. And our next speaker is the founder of the Northern California Investment uh, Real Estate Association. I know I'm saying that wrong, but uh, bring him up here, David Granzella, because you can. Uh, he's going to tell you about his group and what he does. Welcome, David. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is David Granzell. I'm the founder of NorCal Reinvestment Club. We started it in 2004. We've been around for 15 years. First of all, I want to thank Rick and Brent and, of course, James for putting this together. This is a lot of time and effort goes into this, so thank you. It's a ton of work, and it's well worth it. And by the way, I run into a lot of people, including investors and brokers and friends of mine. Not a lot of people put the time and effort, as they were saying earlier, about creating and planning their success for the year. Uh, So, okay, NorCal Reinvestment Club, we've been around for uh, 15 years, since 2004. We're at the Crown Plaza. Everybody know where that used to be the Holiday Inn? What I want to touch on really quickly is, first of all, if you want to write this down, all the the slides I'm going to share with you are on the website at norcalrea.com. It's www.norcalrea.com. I'll give you a couple of information. Crown Plaza. You know, I realized when I was sitting there that real estate's given me the opportunity to have a life beyond my wildest dreams. Um, I come from the dark side, in case you haven't figured it out. I'm a real estate investor and a landlord. Uh, it gives me the freedom beyond my wildest dreams to do what I want financially, landlording, and I found a niche. I was fortunate to find a niche because of ongoing education. I like multi-units. The properties in my portfolio are all five or more units, which makes it commercial. So I recommend finding something along those lines. Oh, by the way, when you go to the NorCalRia.com, go under free resources. There's a ton of information. How many people have ever heard about property radar? Everybody, oh, very good. C- great tool. One, two things I'm going to talk about today for information, for content. If you're here, you're looking for in- improving yourself. PropertyRadar.com is a great place. They have a th- three free-day trial, th- free three-day trial, and tons of information. If you, it's... I'm on that more than I am the MLS, only for the fact that it gives me different information. Also, write this down, thenorrisgroup.com, T-H-E-N-O-R-R-I-S group.com. I'm sorry, the Norris Group, T-H-E-N-O-R-R-I-S-G-R-O-U-P.com. Again, everything's on the website under free resources. I'm going to read a quick letter, which I copied for myself. And I actually, any, there's a group called Sacramento Professional Networks. I had the good fortune of getting laid off September 14, um, 2001 and from corporate America. And it turns out it was one of the best days of my life. 
And I go back to October 2nd, or excuse me, to October 1st, 2002, and it was through the Sacramento Professional Network. It says, well, I'm making a, a job career change. This is after I was left, let go uh, shortly before that. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of being at the mercy of an employer. I am building a property investment company with some partners in crime who also want to be their own boss. While possibly having some control over our lives, I was laid off at 35 and 45. I have no intention of being laid off at 55. So we'll see what God's will is for me and we'll, if I can stay out of my own way. Thanks for your support. That gave me the opportunity to pursue my dreams. And if you're here listening to, to these two gentlemen who are very successful, you're going to also have the opportunity. Let me run through some quick slides real quick. Anybody ever heard of Brandon Bouchard? How many people have heard of Brandon Bouchard? Okay. To give you an idea of what we do and what we don't do, we're here for education. In 2005, I read, read The Golden Parachute. Anybody read that? Found a lot of information there. I contacted Brendan, who was living in San Francisco at the time before he moved to Portland. He came to North Calgary in 2005 and spoke. We're about education, it's not, it's real estate related. How many people in here want to do their first flip? How many people want to get better at the flips they do to make more money? How many people want to do, be here for the long haul and not pay as much taxes, but want rentals? If you're in real estate, do you want to just go to the mailbox? Do you want to travel and realize the money's being deposited? It happened, and if, even though it would happen continuously, I was in Costa Rica for the very first time that happened. It's a good place to be. And as I've told people at, at the club for years, we're not going to be in our 40s forever, so you need to figure this out. We've got, we, we meet continuously on the second Wednesday of the month. January 9th, next week, a good friend of mine, Richard Kelly, is going to be there. He's been in the business probably about 12 years. It turns out he's generated over a million dollars from the, um, from the third year on in either equity or profit continuously. On the second Wednesday, we have um, in February, we have a friend of mine from Southern California who does mobile homes, very, very lucrative business. Also, Bruce Norris is a, owner, is a founder of the Norris Group, as you found. He will be here on March 11th, the second Wednesday, and there'll be 200 of your closest friends at the meeting, Crown Plaza. Uh, meeting starts at 7 o'clock, 7 to 9 o'clock, and we have a meeting before the meeting with a lot of... Uh, continuously successful investors from 6 o'clock on. All the information's on the website in the second Wednesday. And also, uh, as far regarding Property Radar, on uh, April we have David LaPlante from Property Radar. Anyway, the website is norcalria.com, N-O-R-C-A-L-R-E-I-A.com. My name is David Granzella. Contact information. If you have any questions, if you want to find out about flipping, you want to find out about investors, or you want to start working with investors, it's a good place to be. And uh, these two gentlemen give a ton of content, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Again, my name is David Granzel. Thank you. Hi. So real quick, I want to say this before we dive into the whole goal achievement. goal achievement system. We just had fun doing the personal objectives and business objectives. And what those are, a bunch of warm fuzzies, right? Sounds great. Get that free. Pay off the house. Put the kids through college. Save $20,000 this year, whatever it is. It's all warm fuzzies. But when you get down to the goal achievement system, it's, it's really down to making it happen. Now, before I do this, I mentioned one of them was getting a coach. How many think coaches are important in your life? I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. Tiger Woods has a coach. Michael Jordan had a coach. Muhammad Ali had a coach. Everybody has a coach. And I would like to give them, and I want you to chime in on this. Before we do it, I want to just give you something that took me 19 years to learn. And it cost me $12,000 to learn this lesson. It shouldn't have, but I mean, right, we're always in a process of learning, right? So uh, about three years ago, I hired a coach, $1,000 a month. And the more you pay, the more you pay attention. <laughs> is that good? Well, my coach is only 80 bucks a month. Yep. How much do you pay attention? So, uh, so 1000 bucks a month, I was listening. And we talk... Uh, Every week for about 30 minutes, cost me a thousand bucks a month. And he gave me some advice that has been, well, I mean, I mean, the first year I made a hundred thousand dollars with his advice. And, and it's just once you learn it, you don't. So who wants that advice? Anybody want to know? And short 19 years off your learning curve. So one day I was talking to him and he goes, I said, about this great listing appointment I want for like six hundred and sixty thousand dollars. And they're so excited. And I got them and it's great. And uh, pumped, and he's like, awesome. He was, he was tell, asking me what I did and what I was working on. And he says, are, are they going on the market, uh, you know, in the next week or two or three? I go, no, 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 it's, it's uh, January. They're not going on till July, till the summer. He goes, oh, good. He goes, well, did you get a signed listing agreement? And I'm like, no. 
I mean, they're, they're not ready to list till next summer. I'll stay in touch and follow up. And I've been doing this for 19 years. Have you ever gotten back to a seller to find out they actually actually listed, sold, and went off the market? And somebody else lives there? Right? I've, is it just me? I'm telling you, it's just like a Georgia peach in, in Atlanta, Georgia to be picked. So he goes, you did what? You didn't? But I go, that's weird. Ask him to sign a listing agreement now. But it, prices may change this summer. And he was like, oh, my gosh, are you kidding me? And this, this uh, little, little dude in L.A. is killing it, doing $140 million a year in sales. And he goes, let me help you. And this is worth the entire 12-month experience, $12,000 I paid. He said this. When they, when they say that to you, say, great. Now, we think it's worth six sixty, dollars right? Let's go ahead and list it right now for $700,000, 40 more than your wildest dreams. And I know you're not ready to put it on until summer because you're going to redo the deck, which is going to cost you three or $4,000, repaint your interior, you know, redo, redo the roof, and all the stuff they want to do to get their home on the market, right? And what I'm going to do is I might show it once or twice between now and July. But sometimes we get people in town from out of town that are doing a 1031 exchange, and they have to spend money now. And they don't like anything they see on the market. And so I might bring someone to you that wants to buy this for $700,000, 40 more than your wildest dreams. I know what you're thinking. Well, that's no good because I'm not ready to move till next fall. No, I could sell it maybe in a month or two, get you $700,000, and then you don't have to move till next January. We can get you a year rent back for free or maybe for $800 a month. No way. Can you? Yep, I've done it and a million times. I've absolutely done that. And I said, so it's called a kind of a pocket listing. And again, I might show your home once or twice. You're not, you don't want to manage those expectations, right? And worst case, we just put it on the market this summer, and maybe we move it back to 660. Maybe the market's gone up to 700. But what I'd like to do is take two minutes, sign the listing agreement. Don't call it contract. I want to sign the contract with you right now. Words have meaning, right? Who, does anybody here want to sign a contract? No. Oh. How about a listing agreement? It's a little softer. Yeah. It's not a downline. It's an organization, right? Words are powerful. And so basically, let's just take two minutes to do this. Worst case scenario, I get someone to pay you in March or April $700,000. You don't have to do the deck, paint the inside, do all that yard work you're going to do, resurface the pool, and you can stay till next January. We're in the driver's seat. Does that sound good? Every single time they've signed the listing agreement. I told that to a gal last year, and she signed like nine listing agreements on nine appointments where she would have walked away from every one of them. Is that a good one? That's a great one, yeah. Do that. That's a, that's a little Joe? tip. Um, I'll get sellers I'm showing property, right? And they're like, well, I have a showing at 9, showing at 10, showing at 11, so you can't come till noon. Well, my clients are leaving for Carmel at noon, and, I'm like, and I literally have to coach the sellers on, we don't mind showing it at the same time. No, 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 my agent said, you know, to separate the showings, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. I go, if I may, without being overstepping my bounds, if I do show it at the same time you already have one, the buyers scare each other, and they're sure the other couple loves it, and the one who likes it, it gets them to write an offer. The the worst thing you could do is spread them out so they can't see, see each other. So I literally I'll coach people, my advice to you, if you're going to show the property this weekend, show it at 1 o'clock on Saturday and get eight couples there at the same time. Create a circus, a frenzy. And it, it scares the bejeebies out of the ones that really like it. They think the other ones like it. The other ones hated it, but they don't say that. And so I have to coach them. And if you have a listing, it, try to get everyone there at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m., and you could get a whole bunch. You go, well, we just can't come till four. Okay, you're on for four. So now you have two times you show it, 10 to four, and you have multiple carloads of people. They're tripping over each other, and you will sell your listings quicker. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Do that. We're, we should do an eight hour Rick and Brent unplugged. Oh, man. <laughs> two things. First time, first time I'm showing a property. I, don't sh I haven't shown buyers for many years, but I remember showing a buyer. It's only like six, seven years ago. I mean, I'm not talking early in my career. I go to show a home. And the key, the bottom of the box is missing, right? Uh, the box is, is down on the ground, I should say, and there's no key in it. So I go to open a door, and the realtor rushes to the front door and says, I'm sorry, can I help you? I go, yeah, I'm a realtor. I'm here to show the property. And by this time, I'm already pissy and in the business too long, right? <laughs> so he's like, well, I'd appreciate if you and your clients would wait outside until we're done. I hate, I hate I go, that. I'm sorry. Who died and left you? God. I'm like, I... I only have this time to show my clients, and there was nothing in the listing from the listing agent or the seller that said I couldn't. And since you're not the seller, I'm bringing my clients in. So I said, I'm sorry if that makes you uncomfortable. And I said, 
Not that I'm sure why, because at an open house, there's 90 of us in here at once. And I just walked in. And I've had that happen over and over again where the seller will do it. And I just learned a lesson from Brent. I'm going to tell the seller, what are you, stupid? I'm not going to say it like that. But <laughs> So thank you, Brent. And now one more tip, and we'll dive into this, is when you're showing property. Um, a lot of you show f seven great homes. I don't look to do that. I want to show four or five great homes, one disgusting home, one good home, and then four or five great homes at nine hundred thousand. That way, because if they show, if you show four, seven beautiful nine hundred thousand dollar homes, they're just confused. And so I start with the worst home first. It's a nine hundred thousand dollar home in Granite Bay. And, and, it's just, and it's terrible. They're like, bring your tool belt. You can pick out carpet. You can pick out paint. Do you know why they need carpet? Because the cats have been, you know, or whatever. <laughs> I mean, the whole house. And, and I'm telling you, I would never show it. My clients, I pull up and they see bars all over it. Oh, no, go. I don't want to go. I go, we made an appointment. They clean their house. We're going in. I don't care if it's for two minutes. I force my clients to go through. There, It's dark. It smells horrible. Like a murderer lives there. And they're like, we want to go. I go, no, follow me. And we walk through the whole house. They're like, they get out like, oh, my God, can we take a bath? And I'm like, okay, that's home number one. And then they're like, and then we go to the next one, which is, just kind of okay. Like, this is amazing. Then we go to the, thir the, the, the third one, which is the, the fourth worst of my four good ones. And then, then it starts out here, and it goes better, 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 better. And we get to, by the time I'm at five, five six, seven, they're like, we love this. We want to make an offer. And Does that make sense to you guys? I call it momentum. You know why Brent would show the best ones first and end with the duds? By the time I get done showing property, like, oh, God, that... We're depressed, you know, and we'll call you, right? Have anybody ever had that experience? But because you, you mapped it out, because you're analytical, you got Charlie Dupritis. I think you have one, right? Yeah. You run them over, you're just like a aluminum can. Anyways, um, but I'm uh, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't run you over. But anyways, so but you map it out. Well, it makes more sense to start here, then go here, then go here, then go here, then go here, and back to the office. The problem is the best homes might have been the first two or three or four. So I go here to the worst, back over here to the second worst, and the third worst, and the fourth best, and the fifth best, and the sixth best, and the seventh best. By the time I get there, um, I sell them a home the first time we go out all the time. You're being environmentally, well, I want to save fuel and be green and leave a low carbon footprint. You show property for nine months. <laughs> really? Because they're confused. So the home that says we have great security and they're showing all the bars on the house that you ignore, that's my first house. Right? You just get me? Yeah. Because they'll appreciate it. I'm going to go teach my buyer's agents this right away. I'm telling you, it's gold. Yeah. I just want to say I've been speaking on stage for 25 years. I've never lifted my leg on stage ever. <laughs> and Brent just did. I'm just saying. I'm going to use that it, though. You all crazy. laughed. He went. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next topic. All right. So the goal achievement system. Now, I want to honor Jerry, my buddy that I just met. And we're going to be, as I close out this, this workbook, uh, we've got this page is one of the most significant and most important. You looked at your business objectives for five years, one year, and six months, which is what am I going to be doing in my business? And you worked it, then you looked at your personal objectives. And when we get to this goal sheet, there's only one, but you can make a bunch of copies of it because I have like 16 huge goals for myself for this year, lots of them. Uh, I have a very expensive coach. I've shared the information with Brent. He only coaches men. He coaches on everything from life and business and mindset. He's amazing. Uh, $3,500 a month for two one-hour calls, and he has changed my life. Like, not, I shouldn't say he has. I have taken what he shared with me and used it to change my life. So I want you to start to understand that if you ever decide you're going to hire a coach, I want you to ask them this question first. Who is your coach? If they say they don't have a coach or stutter with the answer, find another coach. I'm serious. That's what we call hypocrisy. Wait, you get people to pay you to be coached, but you're not coached? The best golfers in the world have four to five coaches, a physical coach, a workout coach, a, a stamina coach, like every coach you can imagine. So I really want you to be thinking about that. Number two, I want you to think about what Brent said. Coaches don't have to be somebody you call, hire, and pay. Find somebody who is not emotionally or physically or financially attached to the outcome of your goals, and if they desire to coach you, they can coach you. 
because they don't have any change in their life one way or the other. What's made me the best coach, I feel like in the last three years I've become the best coach I've ever been because I've learned to completely detach myself emotionally and just remain being what they hired me to be, which is a coach. Uh, so I want you to be thinking about that as how I can get to these goals. Remember this, if you are going to do more or better or different in 2019 than you did in 2018, you have to become a different person, okay? If you think that's not true, it's not an opinion, it's a foundational fact about life. To do more, I have to be more because the order of things are be, do, have. If I'm going to do things I haven't done before, I'm going to have to be more confident, be more decisive, uh, be more fun, be more resilient, be fearless, all of these different ways of being so that I can accomplish these things. I cannot go, like one my big, hairy, audacious goal for this year is to take 100 listings or $75 million worth of listings, one or the other. Do those both sound pretty huge to you? They do to me. I know people in this area who do 120, 150 sales a year. In our area, to take 100 listings is very unusual. For me, it's never happened in almost 39 years. So it's a huge, humongous goal for me. You got that? But what do I have to do? What I didn't do last year is 90 minutes a day, five days a week, concentrating on lead generating for, for listings. If, I, if FISBO is expired, door knocking, all those types of things that I would do. But I'm committed to them. I have already had, since Monday, five listing appointments. I have four more between now and Saturday. That's, I have never done 10 listing appointments in a week in my entire career, ever. Okay, so am I committed to the goal? Yes, I'm calling everybody, no matter who they are, what they are, and saying, hi, <laughs> happy new year. Who do you know who's thinking about selling? <laughs> like, that's it. It's, they're very direct phone calls. So when you look at this goal sheet, I want you to start looking at every aspect of your life, print up a bunch of them, and start putting down the humongous goals. Now, real quick, write down S-M-A-R-T, quickly. S-M-A-R-T, write it downwards, not across. Smart goals, S-M-A-R-T, okay? But I want you to remember, if you heard of the definition of these letters before, forget them. I'm going to give you new definitions. Some of them will be the same. Three of them will be different. This S stands for, most of you know, specific, right? They have to be specific goals. Number two, to prove their specificity, you must be able to measure them. M is measure. Now, the A in the old days, or for you wimps, excuse me, don't, please, I know there's a lot of huge men in here, sir, with the A's cap, don't beat me up later, I didn't mean wimp at you personally, so, um, no. <laughs> but the A is not attainable, okay, the, the, that's what people do, they put smart, excuse me, specific, measurable, and attainable, attainable is for wimps. I'm not worried about whether I attain 100 listings. I'm worried about doing the activities that could get me 100 listings. And if I only end up with 60, I'm not going to be pissed, right? 60, average sale price, a million. Oh, that's 60 million. What is there to be pissed at? The money, right? So specific, measurable, and action-bound, right? I hear people say, my goal is to binge watch Orange is the New Black. No, that's not an actionable goal. That's a sit on your butt on the couch goal. So if it is not actionable, it doesn't measure as a goal. Do you get that? Meaning something I have to go into activity to get. Now you can say I disagree, but I'm saying for the sake of this class, for you getting everything you want. The R used to be, who remembers? Realistic or reasonable? Bull crap. It's risky. I want my goal to be risky. Like when I think of taking 100 listings, I get like queasy in the stomach. Like I'm, and I've got my whole team now because I've been talking about this since September when I first wrote out my rough draft business plan. And they're like, okay, so what are you going to do? Right? Like I was in the office yesterday. All the team happened to be in the office on the same day. They're like, so what are we doing to get those 100 listings? I'm like, bite me. Go make a phone call. <laughs> Hoping you'd catch that. All right, so what are we up to? The R is risky, and the last one, T, is always the same, time-bound, right? So by December 31st of 2019, I will close out the year having taken 100 listings. That's a very specific goal. And then underneath mine, it says, or 75 million in volume in listings taken. Okay, those are my two ifs for me. Number two, my next goal is very, very big. I want to do 1.5 closed buyer transactions for every closed listing transaction. Is that specific and measurable? 
Yes or no? Yes, so that means my buyer's team is on the stake because as a coach, we coach our teams that for every listing that they close, they should be able to close 1.5 buyers. If I close 80 listings, I should be able to close 120 buyers. Very specific, measurable. Got that? Yes, Marguerite. I have three. I have also on my activities list to hire two more buyers agents. Okay? 1.5 buyers per closed listing, period. So if I close 80 listings, I should be closing 120 buyers, and that's my team doing it. Right? Does that sound pretty nauseous to anybody but me? It sounds very risky and nauseous to me, and that's what counts. Love it. Okay, now, 173 pounds, 12% body fat. Another huge goal of mine. Do 100 push-ups in five minutes or less. See what I'm saying about the goals? Remember the first two were business, then I'm talking about my health and nutrition, right? Take six weeks of vacation time with my wife and my two grown sons, then I will break that down to how much of that will be alone with my wife, how much will be together, do you get that? Like start thinking about all those goals. That's why I have four of those sheets printed out for me that say goal achievement. But here's the exciting part. What's the first question underneath the first goal? Why, why the hell do you want this? Excuse my language, why the H-E double toothpicks do you want that? And I'll tell you, for me the why is more time freedom, more financial freedom in listings than in buyers, agreed? Then what's it say next? It says your excuses for failure up till now. Doesn't it say that? So what's my excuses for failure been? Well, I'm a coach, I'm a speaker, I'm a trainer, I'm traveling, da 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 da, -da. Bull crap, again, right? Now, then it says what's your resolve, do you see that? What do I resolve to do such that I will no longer use that as an excuse? I will commit to 90 minutes a day, five days a week of lead generation geared or pointed at listings, not buyers. Capiche? I want you to look at that because every goal you do, if you don't answer those four questions, you're not giving yourself the kick in the butt you need. Jerry said, well, how do I do this? If, if I've got this beautiful plan, how do I do it? Well, then you have to start planning your day. All right? So if uh, everybody commit to me that you will send them an email to events at brettgove.com to get this workbook. Raise your hand if you promise to do that because that's the only way we're going to get all your email addresses. <laughs> because wait, let me finish why I want your email address. If you do, I will send you all an email with the, not only the business plan workbook but scripts and dialogues for how to get more business immediately but also there will be these amazing uh, planning, a, a perfect week planning system, an Excel spreadsheet, and a daily success habits form, Jerry, where you will track your day in 30-minute segments. So at the end of a week, you can say, this is my calendar, this is what I said would get done, and this is what actually got done. And they will never be alike, ladies and gentlemen, and that's okay. That's what you want. You want to start measuring, wait, I thought I would lead generate here, but instead I cleaned out the closet that had the coats in it for eight years, right? You start to see the excuses you make to avoid lead generation and ma'am, right here in the front, lead follow-up, okay? All right. Yes. Drive in? Yeah. Okay, just real quick. How, who knows what a BHAG is? Big, it's a trick question. He's been saying it the whole time. Big, hairy, audacious goal, right? It's an acronym. You need BHAGs. Why, he hit on it. Why is it so important? Like he said they need to scare you. He trembles when he thinks a little bit. I, I remember even my famous BHAG was 30 sales in 30 days. Is that pretty good? No. Me alone, no team, my personal production. You got all day tomorrow, not why not show property, write an offer, and put it in escrow? Why not list a home and do it right and sell it the next day? Why not do 30 homes in 30 days? I remember when I set that goal, it'll wake you up at 5.30 in the morning and keep you up until 10.30 at night. And every day counts. Some of you are so not desperate, it kills me. You got to be, I'm always desperate, not needy. There's a difference. Do you understand the difference between needy? Don't be needy. Be desperate for success, and then you will go through the metamorphosis to change. Um, there's this great saying, no one has a plan. Uh, uh, um, a man with a plan cannot fail because no one has a plan to stop him. You know, a woman with a plan cannot fail because no one has a plan. No one's got a plan to stop you. It's just you never came up with a plan. You didn't execute. That famous uh, kid on the, on the Internet right now, he was talking about um, implementation, he says, most people get these ideas and they do nothing. You said earlier, get these ideas and do nothing. He says, get these ideas, implement, implement, it, start now, now. I love you. That's the yeah. best thing you said all day. Yeah. So, no, don't stop on a re You got more. Go. I just want to tell you no, I no, love no, you no. because that will drive you further. Yeah, yeah. My love for you. So, 
here it is, your goals. Maybe it's uh, for you, the big hag is 20 listings this year and, and 30 buyer sales. Or maybe it's 10 buyer sales and five listings. I don't know, but there they are. Make them big, make them unrealistic, make them risky, unattainable, scary, yeah. and then get to work because the goal will have you do crazy stuff you never did before, like call. Uh, people you would normally call and ask for referrals because you were so desperate to hit this crazy goal, and then all of a sudden you get so much further than you ever dreamed you could get. Yes, I had an old business coach many years ago that told me, I want you to keep going every day until you get five abrupt no's. Abrupt no's, meaning no, like that. A day, like I had to keep calling, and I have never gotten to five abrupt no's in a day, ever. Ever, like asking people, hey, will you hire me to speak for five grand a day? I've never had anybody go, no, like no. So keep asking those questions. And that's, that's what he said about the thing. The, every year, my wife and I, if you follow us on Facebook, um, we set a word, one word for each of us as our context for the whole following year. And my, because I've had such a learning year, is learning usually painful or fun? It is usually painful. The most important part is to be grateful for it because if you're learning and growing, you must be going through something, okay? And you have to learn that the pain and the growth I'm going through is on the way to where I'm going, not in the way. Nobody blocked where you're going. They just gave you lessons on how to get past the biggest challenges. So my word, so funny he said it, for 2019 is actually implementation. Take everything I've learned from my amazing $3,500 a month coach and for all the lessons I went through, how to stand in my truth, how to say what I mean without regards about if it hurts somebody's feelings or they don't like it because I've spent my whole life lying about my feelings because I didn't want to hurt anybody, right? Instead, I got hurt because of it. So I want you to be thinking about what can I do this year that will absolutely get me to where I want to go. In every aspect of your life, ladies and gentlemen, this isn't just about your business. If you've got something, a demon that's pissing you off, then damn it, change that. And it will take discomfort, growth, and pain. Get an expert. Hire somebody who knows about your demons and have them tell you about it. This coach is so worth the 3500 bucks a month like because of how he's helped me with my demons. So you got to be thinking about that. The, this sheet is the most serious sheet you can look at in the whole business plan workbook, and you've really got to take it seriously and start looking at what I want to change. And don't worry about if you get there. If you set it big and hairy enough, you're, it's like reach for the moon, you'll land among the stars, and I promise you, you will. You may not hit the goal. Don't be mad, but look at the person you became because you set that goal. Yep. So let's get started right now. It's seven to ten minutes. You will get out of this what you put into it. Really put some effort into this right now. And please raise so, your hand if you have questions. Please, yep. we really want you to have 2019 yep. be your best freaking year ever. Those are any types of goals, not just business, okay? I'd love to see you do business. That's why we're here, like number of, number of listings I'll take or number of closed transactions, but you got to get it written down and you got to answer those questions underneath. Just start with a couple and that'll warm you up. Awesome. Okay. We are going to switch gears here. And by the way, I can, I can, he's terrible at asking for help. You, you don't call me that often. That's and true. He has over 400 agents and brokers across America. Now give him a hand in his <laughs> EXP business. So that's not bad, not bad. Okay, so what we're going to do next is you've, you've come up with these wonderful goals, these business objectives. You've come out with some, uh, a plan, how to implement, how to execute, when, where, actionable items. If you walk out of here and go, well, I didn't get any actionable items, that's on you. We can't do it for you. You got to spend the time, right, Rick? Absolutely. And so our next speaker is right here, and he is going to talk to you about an event happening next month here in Sacramento. And so before I bring Raul up here, he is uh, just a world-class uh, human being on just a personal level. He's become a friend of mine. He's putting on here in Sacramento kind of a John Maxwell, Zig Ziglar, a Jim Rome, Tony Robbins type event about personal growth. It's a one-day event. It's going to be a blast. This is the kind of stuff you want to go to to fix what's on the inside because when you fix what's here, and it's not like I went to one, I'm done, I'm done. No, it's little bits and pieces. It's like a puzzle. You keep putting it together, you get better and better. So help me welcome right here from Sacramento, California, Mr. Raul Lopez. Give him a hand. Hello, everybody. 
My name is Raul Lopez. I'm author of Heal the Boy, The Man Will Appear. I'm a life coach, and I call myself a motivational educator because, edu because motivation isn't always what it takes. Uh, sometimes we get motivated, and then we go home, and we don't do nothing with it, right? So motivational educator is what I like to call myself. Um, this book is called Heal the Boy and the Man Will Appear. Learn the importance of understanding and expressing your emotions. And it's all about what Brent just said, is understanding who we are in here. Sometimes first we got to get to here and then we go down to here. Um, I, have to, I, I don't have too much time, so I do want to uh, respect these guys' awesome event here. So I, but I do want to do two exercises with you guys. Um, I enjoy being at different events. I go personally to four or five events per year. I put on three per year myself. Um, because it's, it's, we are the doers, we're the creators, we're the action takers. Everybody here, congratulations, because you've spent your time here today. Time is key, even more important than money in my book, but you've also spent some money and that's just as important. So I want to do two exercises with you guys. Um, one of them is going to help you soak in the information that we've learned today and understand that you can use this technique when you're at home, when you get home later. Because when we hear the stories about these guys making millions of dollars and millions of dollars and 100 sales and all these types of things, we do get a little bit sick in the stomach. We go, man, that's great, but I don't think I could do that. You know, and we, we get these weird feelings within us, the internal dialogue that we get, right? The stories that we tell ourselves. So what we're going to practice real quick is just a, a basic breathing exercise. I don't know if you guys have done these before. But while I'm explaining it, just start to breathe in really deep. Hold it and let it go. Just, just do a few breaths there, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to guide you through five, five or so breaths, but just kind of get them in there, get, get some deep breaths in. What this does is when we take a breath, it, it, it calms our mind, it calms our body. And as we start to do these five, I want you to kind of close your eyes, take these deep breaths, hold it in for a second, release it, and recognize how your body feels. You will start to feel a calming in your body, a calming in your mind. And when your mind calms that way and you're relaxed, you think better and you make better decisions. You think better, and you make better decisions. So anytime you're in a state of something frantic happening, oh, I want to make this money, I want to cut this deal, I have to do this, I have to do that, we usually don't make good decisions, or we make no decision at all. So let's take five deep breaths. Ready? One. You recognize your body, how it's relaxing. Your body's calming. You're relaxing. You're clearing your mind. You're receiving what we're talking about today. You're receiving. You're relaxed. Start thinking about every day, in every way, things are going to get better and better. Everything I've learned today, every day, in every way, things are going to get better and better. Okay. With that calming state, when you're at work, when you're at the office, when you're at an open house, wherever you're at, in your, is, is everybody 100% in here real estate, some, some form in the industry? Is anybody not? Oh, we got a couple, good. So, so wherever you're at, in whatever business you're in, in whatever you're doing, uh, family, relationships, career, whatever you're doing, this helps us calming, make better decisions. We think clearer, okay? So that's one tool you can use that helps you in business relationships our personal relationships, business, and, and so on and so forth, okay? Now, uh, how many people here have, have heard of Tony Robbins? All right, everybody, pretty much. Ke uh, Jack Canfield? Zig Ziglar? Okay, now I'm curious about this one. Earl Nightingale? Everybody, if you've heard, I want to kind of really get a good look. Earl Nightingale? Okay, about half, exactly right. So what, what I'm going to uh, ask you to do when you get home, when you're in the car, whatever it is, listen to Earn Nightingale's. It's called The Strangest Secret. Um, listen to that one. Um, he, he goes pretty far back, but it's, he's an amazing guy. If you listen to that every day, uh, commitment to that every day, you, you'll, you'll, you'll learn a few things. Okay, now, the next exercise I want to do really quickly, because I know we, i, I got I to gotta give these guys their time back, is I want you to get a piece of paper just on the back of your sheet, whatever you're doing here, and I want you to draw, this is going to help you with communication with people, business relationships, anything else you're doing. Draw a blueprint, what you, your idea of a blueprint. You, you know what a blueprint, like if you're building a, a building and you go and a contractor has a blueprint, just create anything, any random blueprint. Draw up a blueprint. Just quick and easy, doesn't have to be fancy, just your idea of a blueprint. Real big, something like this. Draw, draw it out because you're going to share it with somebody. 
This is mine. I mean, it, this is my blueprint. Yours doesn't have to look anything like it. I'm sure it should be different, actually. All right, just a couple more seconds here. Just a quick, I just, I drew mine in like five seconds. I just drew a bunch of circles, a bunch of lines, a bunch of dots, and I had a blueprint there. All right, everybody have their blueprint drawn? All right, so uh, what I get into in my books and in my seminars and uh, in the event that I have coming up February 15th is we talk a lot about conditioning and conforming, right? We are conditioned from birth, and we conform to the people in our environment around us, and a lot of our beliefs, we don't even know why we have them, but they're based on how we were raised, okay? Now, what, what this is, I'd, I'd like for you to get somebody next to you, just turn to the side, and, and show them your blueprint, and then you look at their blueprint. Just real quickly. All right. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this. This is just real quick. Is, is anybody's blueprint, is anybody's blueprint exactly the same? Nobody's, right? Okay, so this, this blueprint is, is a reflection of your personal life, your personal thoughts, the way you think, your goals, just the way you live and the things you believe in. So what I like to do with these blueprints, and, and I use this analogy in my life coaching with my clients, is it helps you understand people, whether it be in your family, your kids, your, your spouse, or at work. And when you're talking to somebody and they say something you don't like or something you think might be inappropriate, or they do an action or something that you don't like and you get upset. And you know, I don't like that person, I'm not talking to them anymore. If you understand that this blueprint is their life, and because what they're doing or saying doesn't fit on your blueprint, that's why you're upset. So if you understand that your own self and your own blueprint, then when somebody else offends you or upsets you or whatever it might be, you can think to yourself, they have a different blueprint than I do. They're not, they're not, they didn't grow up the way I did. They aren't having the challenges, the happiness, the joy, whatever. They're different than I am, and they have a different blueprint. So that's just a little trick you could use. Maybe when you're using a client who's kind of stubborn, having some problems, giving you a hard time, you can go, wow, man, I don't know what they're going through. Uh, but yeah, uh, their blueprint is different than mine. I was raised different. I believe different things, and it's okay, and it helps you communicate a little better. Okay, cool. So those were the two quick exercises. We're going to do a bunch of cool stuff at this event that I have coming up. Um, Here's the event. It's called uh, Tag Talks is the brand of my company, uh, Sacramento Growth Conference, uh, February 15th. Uh, we are blessed to be using um, Bridgeway, locally Bridgeway Church's venue. It is not a Bridgeway event. They've made it very clear, had me say that. It's not a Bridgeway event, but they're allowed, they like what we're doing. Um, Tag Talks stands for Transparency, Acceptance, and Growth. Talk about transparency. These guys have been transparent today on stage, haven't they? Huh? All, the, all the way up to Brent raising his leg. That's that fun stuff? <laughs> I love that, too. Um, so, so that's what the, the event is all about. Um, this guy up on top, a lot of people know him, a lot of people don't. Does anybody know Quest Bars, Quest Protein Bars and things like that? That's Tom Bilyeu. Um, Tom Bilyeu is our keynote speaker. He's an amazing guy. He also has Goal Cast and the Impact Theory. He interviews all kinds of famous movie stars and stuff. He, he actually sold Goal, I mean, uh, Quest Bars for a billion dollars. And when he made his money, he realized the money it wasn't all about the money. And I think we hear that a lot. And it takes us to be able to make a bunch of money and then realize that, unfortunately. Uh, but what he talks about is there's two poverties. One is poverty of no money, and one is poverty of the mind. Poverty of the mind. It's a powerful speech. And then this guy here is Alex Stern. These are my two big hitters. Alex Stern, uh, he created Constant Contact. It's very similar to like MailChimp and those types of things. Constant Contact was, was, was the number one for many years. Uh, he created that, co-founded it, uh, sold that for, I think, $1.1 billion. And he's doing very similar. He's traveling around, speaking on stages, telling you how to, what it takes to create a billion-dollar business. So he's going to be another one of our keynote speakers. We've got Krista Mayshore up there. She's a top 1% real estate agent across the United States. Um, and a bunch of other great people that are going to share some, some stories. So real quickly, this is February 15th. Oh, here's what I want to do, too. Uh, I, if you go to Tag Talks Live, write that down, key it in your phone, whatever you want, tagtalkslive.com, tagtalkslive.com. Uh, you can get tickets there. There's three levels of tickets. If you put in the, I'm going to tell you guys for today, if you put in the name Tom as a discount code, you'll get 25% off, and all the tickets right now are buy one, get one free. you got three different levels, okay? Um, next thing I'd like to do, if I can, is... Oh, it starts that day promptly at 9. So the doors will open at 8. 
people are going to come in at 9, and it's a full day event. We've got about eight speakers coming on. We're going to do a panel discussion so people can interact with Tom and some of the, the speakers at, at Bridgeway Church right here. Yep, Bridgeway Church. Um, oh, here's the video. Do we get sound, too? I don't give a shit if you're a born entrepreneur. I don't care if you've been to jail. I don't care if you dropped out of high school. What do you want to become? And what price are you willing to pay to get there? Welcome to Impact Theory. You are here, my friends, because you believe that human potential is nearly limitless. The Impact Theory is me answering the no bullshit question of what does it take to influence culture, right? Like at the deepest level, why I want to do it. I want to pull people out of the matrix. When you have a deep-seated need to do something that will be remembered by history, I'm your man. But tonight we're pleased to welcome Tom Bilyeu, co-founder of Quest Nutrition. Focusing on money wasn't giving us that sense of fulfillment. At the end of the day, there's this other thing that humans have, which is passion. This is how we grew our business 57,000% in our first three years alone. But you've got to be willing to put your head down. You've got to be willing to grind. You've got to be willing to go through the process of changing. And I didn't say, okay, Michael, that's good enough. It was like, okay, Michael, you got one. Go get two. Go get another one. And go get another one. If you want to make a change, you have to begin telling yourself a different narrative. The only thing that's going to be constant in this ever-changing world, especially in the startup space, is who I am. We all have shortcomings, and we all have strengths. And for me, it's like, why don't we just audit that? I'm not gonna say motivated, because motivation's crap. Motivation comes and goes. When you're driven, whatever's in front of you will get destroyed. How do you push yourself to like keep pushing, stay relevant, when it's like, I'm Sean White, bitches. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you are serious about improving your life, you better subscribe to this show, because you're missing out. It's absolutely unbelievable. Until next time, be legendary, my friends. Awesome. So, yeah, that's Tom Billy. For those of you who don't know him, uh, the last lady that was just popped up on there is Mel Robbins. She's going to be at our following event at later in the year. It's probably going to be in Arizona, though. Um, so, yeah, uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you, Brent. Thank you, Rick. Um, go there, tagtalkslive.com. I'll tell you what I'll do. Anybody that's, that's here, if you buy tickets from today's event, you'll get an email that will uh, say these are your tickets and what will happen is I'm going to reply to you and depending on how many people purchase tickets today or tomorrow, I'm going to reply to three of you. I'm going to upgrade you to diamond tickets. So we have general, VIP, and diamond. Diamond are $1,200 tickets. Uh, with, with, the v, with the diamond ticket, you get to uh, private luncheon with Tom, with the speakers. You get to take pictures, meet and greet, and the whole thing. So when you get your reply email, or re get, when you get your email, reply to me and say, I got this from Brent and Rick, and I will send you uh, a couple of you guys a, a discount. Hey, wait a minute. Have I met you before today? No, sir. And I just kissed you on the forehead, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I did my first personal development work uh, just short of my 51st birthday, 10 years, a little over 10, almost 11 years ago. And just this year, I did work on what the title of his book is, the, about Heal the Boy and the Man Will Appear. And that is a lot of work. It's thousands of hours that I've devoted over the last 10 years. And when you start, on, and by the way, that's just as it relates to a man. It also relates to women. Uh, that's where my coach came out of that kind of work. I would highly suggest that you get his book. I highly suggest, I don't know him, but because of the title of his book, I'm going to become close friends with him. So really, commit to becoming a better you, and all your goals will come much quicker. Absolutely. All Thank right. you. I appreciate that, Thank Rick. You. Okay, one last thing. If you're interested in the book, or it, and I have a coaching assessment that I use. It's called Habit Finder, because habits is all to do with what you're doing today, too. We can, we can go through all this and fill this all out, but if your habits are to just not do anything with it, I have a free assessment on my website, RaulLopezJr.com, and if you take that assessment, I'll give you a free hour coaching session also. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Raul. Great job, brother. Awesome. We'll see. I'll be there. I will be there. We're going to wrap this up in 12 minutes. You guys ready? Buckle up. Let's finish it. Let's do this thing. We are on. Okay, so now flip your page. The least favorite page of mine in the workbook. What do you see? Oh, yeah, I already told you I hate finances, right? When you hate finances, you get other people to do it for you that know it a lot better than you. Be honest with yourself. Make sure you get that taken care of. This is not a page for this room. You need to be looking at stuff. If you're not using something like Quicken or QuickBooks or have some system around your finances, then get that taken care of, ladies and gentlemen. I literally can remember a time in my 20s when I thought if you had checks left, there must be money in the account. And that was not true. Just saying, all right? So really want you to remember to take that page seriously. 
Let's go to the next page. The next page is, it's missing. Where is it? It was, I just saw it. You just showed it. Oh, it's right here. Okay, is this the next page? All right. So really quickly, what I want you to understand is a business plan, when you, get, when, when you give me the email address, I'm going to also send you something called an income goal spreadsheet. So you can look at numbers and percent commissions as they relate to you and your personal business, right? So um, I want you to look at this form seriously because what's it say under the words hit your target? What is your income goal? And then the next sentence says, what are your four pillars of income? So let's say, ma'am, right here that's talked, what's your first name? Yes, you, no, you. Natalia. Natalia? Okay, so let's say I'm talking to Natalia and I say, Natalia, what's your goal this year? And she says, I want to close 36 homes. So she's a unit goal, right? You could have a volume goal, you could have a unit goal, or you could have a GCI goal, all right? And GCI, please remember, ladies and gentlemen, GCI is before anybody touches the freaking money, right? $300,000 house, 3%, GCI is nine grand. It doesn't change, doesn't alter. GCI is always before people. But let's say she says to me, I want to sell 36 houses the next year. Those four lines off the, off the target board are four different ways that she could sell 36 homes in a year. All right, so let's say I, I coach her on Brent Goh's style of doing open houses, and she works the heck out of open houses. Could she sell 36 homes in a year just from working open houses, yes or no? Absolutely. Now I talk to her about door knocking, door knocking like a crazy. Like Brent said he's never door knocked. I do a ton of door knocking and less open houses. Could I teach her to do door knocking and get 36 deals? Right. So that's the thing I want you to remember. What's the one thing that almost every agent puts down as one of their pillars of income? Sphere, sphere of influence, right? Your, your database, would you agree? One of the things that's going to be in the email I sent you, which is more incentive to make sure you send your info to this email address, is something called top 50. We're going to show you how to separate the top 50 out of your database. So now, Natalia's next two items could be my top 50 and my sphere of influence. They will operate as two separate things. There's a 27-page booklet in there about how to use your, how to really create your top 50 that will give you the most referrals and how to work with them. So it's important, no matter what I've said now, what are your four? Some people say, oh, I'm going to buy a bunch of Zillow leads. Good. Now you've got to follow up with them, nurture them, you know, make sure. Whatever your four styles are, you've got to have four and work the heck out of them so that you could do, she could essentially, when I get done with her, do 36 in each of those instead of just one. But the idea is if you've got four different ideas that will each get you 36 sales, there's a big chance you're going to get your 36 sales this year. Did you get that? So that form's very important for that. Any questions? I didn't think so. Let's move on. All right. Now, the, the next few pages are these action sheets. You see them? There, there are 17 action items on each. Take a guess what those are for. You remember that goal sheet that you did a couple of pages ago? Each goal has one of these sheets. But you know my 100 listing goal? I've got two of these completely filled out. So 34 action items for my 100 listing goal. Do you get that? You've got to print these up and have like, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm not a work on a computer kind of guy. I like to spread stuff out. So I've got several of these workbooks printed with scratching out and, and I don't do them in pencil. I just like scratch out, put red lines, use a different colored pen so that I can look at, here's my 100 listing goal, and here's my list of activities. Then I have my buyer's agents and my assistant and my transaction coordinator all look at those. I even did my team party. I had my uh, mortgage lady there. I had my, the inspection rep, the home warranty rep, and I looked at all. I said, how can you guys contribute to this goal of mine, and how can I contribute to your goal? That's what I said at my Christmas little party for my team and my, the people that support me. So they're all like already call me, Rick, I think I might have a listing lead. These are people I've worked with for years and they've never given me a listing lead, right? And now because I, what did I do? Oh, I asked. How fun was that, right? So think about that as you're doing this, uh, these action item sheets for each one. Tanya, your action item, like for what was the skiing goal again? Okay, but better is not excuse me, specific or measurable. So you want to, like for instance, I do push-ups every single day, but I've never been able to do 100 push-ups in five minutes or less. So I'm being very specific. So what would that goal look like specific? Okay. There you go. Wow, that sounded like I pissed you off. That's good. Okay, let's hug it out later. Okay, do you get what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen? 
All right, so th those action item sheets, you've got four of them, but remember, print up as many of those as you need. Don't worry about it. I'm going to send you a fresh booklet, too, that's by email, so you'll be able to download it and have, like, fresh copies. So, Rick, real quick. Yeah. When you, when you email us at events at brentgove.com, you're going to get this, but it's in full color. And print it on your color printer. It is so cool when you do this thing in color. It looks way better. Yeah. And then my dream is that you fill it out, you spend some time, and you let it get tattered and torn on your, on your driver's seat. Just grab that sucker. Oh, the kids might. That's fine. You should see my goal sheets. I have one at the office. We did, James, is this true? Two years ago, I set a plant plans for five and ten years out, and it sits right there. We taped it to the top of the desk. It's been torn. It's been marked up. You know which one I'm talking about. Come in my office. I'll show it to you. And it said we would have 5,000 agents and brokers across the United States at the end of 2018. And his goal, your goal, was how many? And, and December 31st, what did we hit? He won. But did I lose? No. Right? No. And so, but that thing's tattered, torn. I looked at it every day. I see it all the time. And I, I know some of you, this just kills me. You're going to go home and put this in your desk. You know, put it file. It'll never be seen again. Do not. I'm begging you. This is your treasure map. Absolutely. Let it get all beat up. Yeah, I'll give you an example. You guys know those little sticky notes? There is 17 of them in our house that has my wife's monthly income goal from her business. 17 of them stuck all over the freaking house. Luxurious dining room with this beautiful table, and there's right on the doorknob into the dining room is a yellow sticky note that says 30,000 bucks on it, right? Like that's all over the house because it's a constant reminder. I'm going to encourage you not just to have it on your car seat, but make copies of it. Have one on the mirror where you get your, where you get your toothpaste out yes. of the medicine cabinet. Have one on your dashboard. Have one in your drawer at the desk. Have one on your desk. Have one stuck to your, if you have a landline, stick one on there. I don't use my landline, so there's a business plan stuck right on it. So the phone never gets used. In fact, it's unplugged from the wall. So we got right. four minutes. Yeah. What do we got, 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 to, go. we got to okay. say? So those are it. That is essentially the end of the business plan. I want you just to look at those last two pages for me because these, I want you to remember these initials, BFO, and that stands for Blinding Flash of the Obvious. These two sheets, one says Career Path and one says Business Marketing, and these sheets are designed to give you commonly used basic fundamental ideas in promoting yourself, promoting your business, prospecting, all of those things that are commonly and basically known by real estate agents and companies all over the United States and Canada. But notice it's got little blank boxes and little blank lines for you to add ideas that you think of. Ladies and gentlemen, I talk to lots of new agents and they go, I'm going to be amazing. I'm going to get a website and I'm going to get a Facebook page and I'm going to like shut up and get on the phone. That's all you've got to do, right? But as you build your business, do you agree you got to do more? Right, we're in a social media world, so you've got to get your Instagram account, you've got to get your Facebook account, you've got to have a website, you've got to do all these things. So it truly means that you will need to have these generations. So if, if you leave with nothing, but you start asking for more help, then you've succeeded today. Start asking people for help. Take people to lunch and say, teach me what you know. I'll buy you lunch. People will do that. You'd be surprised. There's so much ego out there like, you're going to buy me lunch just for me to give you my ideas? Yeah, let's do that. How's lobster? Right? <laughs> sure, red lobster. <laughs> Any day. The cheese biscuits are amazing. I'll fill you up on those. Right? Or Olive Garden. All you can eat salads and breadsticks. So, not that I know from experience. <laughs> So I want you seriously to look at those two pages. Those two pages are for early in the morning or late at night because it'll boggle your mind. Please, Gary Keller used to say this when I used to mastermind with him. He'd say, don't add new systems, new people, or new projects into your business until the ones you plan on keeping are running excellently. And then start another one, okay? What did you say? Oh, that same one I just said? Yeah, don't bring on any new people, systems, or technology until the ones you've chosen to use that you'll stick with are running excellently. Okay? Like, I don't, I'm just learning conversion at a high level. We move from boomtown to conversion. I've got my assistant working on being better at conversion. I've got my team working on it. I'm not adding anything right now until they all got that down. I'll add more buyer's agents because that all takes is my assistant train them on conversion. But I'm not adding different systems into conversion. I'm just getting down the basics. 
So you got to look at that. I am not perfect. I am the guy with 35 years of mistakes. I learned through my mistakes. I'm trying to help you not have the mistakes and skip right to the success, okay? Will you fail? You absolutely will, but you'll fail forward. Very good. Okay, we're going to wrap this up with um, something I've been doing for the past 22 years. I was at Remax for 12 years, and I would travel to events. Uh, Tom Ferry, Mike Ferry, Brian Buffini, Craig Proctor, Stower Power, Hatton Britton, Remax. Go to Keller Williams, Family Union, Mega Camp, Mastermind Groups, uh, NAEA, Haas Pratt Seminars, uh, PSI Seminars. I mean, my gosh, I'm, I'm always going. And you know what? We're, we're just working on it. And, and so I want to challenge you. We have a nice lineup for you this year. And uh, the, uh, we have Raul's event, Lopez's event, coming up the 15th day after Valentine's there. Um, that's going to be amazing, a chance to grow and work on winning inside. You win here, it's over. You get what you expect. Some of you just don't expect enough. Uh, number two, we're going to do a huge event like this end of February, EXP event. You know, I did this stuff at Remax. I did this stuff at Keller Williams. I do it at EXP. So end of February, we're going to have a big training uh, thing like this here again. Uh, that'll uh, come out, more information to follow. Uh, in the end of March, we're going to Cancun. So if you want to come and uh, do that, come with us. By the way, in 10 days, we'll be in Scottsdale, the JW Marriott Resort and Spa, my favorite resort in the country. That's a leadership event. You're all invited. If you're interested, see me. I'll tell you more about that. In June, we'll be in Orlando, Florida, August, Las Vegas. Um, then in October, back to Las Vegas. And then in January, we're going to Cancun again or maybe uh, Cabo San Lucas with about 1,800 of us. You're just... You think, wow, all that. I've been, I've been doing this for 22 years. Yes, it's a blast. You know, and if you don't want to go, don't go. But this is how you learn. When you have lunch or breakfast with somebody who's selling 200 homes a year, and you go, look, you're in, you know, Nashville. I'm in Sacramento. What's the number one thing you do to get listings? They look left, they look right. They go, run this ad on Facebook. <laughs> no, they do. I've had breakfast with people like that. What's the number one? Meet someone from Miami. They're selling 600 homes a year. What's the number one bit of advice you'd have for me? But see, I'm at the events, and I, I applied these things, right? At, right, you know? right. And guess what? They t they'll tell you. You walk up to someone right here in your market and go, how are you selling 80 homes a year? What are you doing? They don't necessarily going to tell you exactly. Are you with me? Does that make sense? Yeah. It's not a bad thing. It's just human nature. Right. But go there. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. I mean, mix it up. Absolutely. And I'm going to do a little plug for something else for myself really quickly. How many people would like to take this again or know somebody that's not here that would like to take business planning? Raise your hand. All seven of you. Thank you. So um, <laughs> I'm teaching this on the 14th at the Sacramento Association of Realtors from 9 to noon. Unfortunately, my buddy Brent won't be with me, uh, but I will uh, be teaching it uh, just as intently as I did today. Uh, it's January 14th. January 14th. It's just uh, a week, week from this, from this Monday. coming Monday. Uh, that is me as part of my speaking business, I was hired to do that. That's this is Brent and I. We like to collaborate on stuff like this, but this one is I was a hired speaking job, and I love doing this class, this abbreviated version. And there'll be some stuff I never like, like Natalia just sh proved. I never say the same thing twice, even if you ask me two minutes later, it comes out differently. Uh, so I will be doing the class. Please, if you really want to internalize this, Anthony Robbins says this: the final step to self mastery is teaching. Find somebody that wasn't here, sit down, go over your business plan with them, give them a blank copy of your book. In the process of you showing them what you learned, you'll have learned and internalized more. Okay? Be a giver, ladies and gentlemen. Takers are not in the room. Thank you. Happy New Year, everyone. Go be prosperous. <laughs>